It's the Daily Comedy News with your host, Mark Pyers. Join us for breaking headlines and all kinds of comedy shenanigans. Brought to you by the Beat Seat. What happens to Queen Camilla if Charles, King Charles dies? It's complicated, like everything else in 2024. Let's see what happens, guys. The news that King Charles III has some kind of cancer has triggered lesions of what-if questions on both sides of the Atlantic. One scenario is the ailing king decides to abdicate his throne, tend to his health, and immediately putting a spotlight on his eldest son and first in line to the throne, Prince William. Now, I'm pretty sure she becomes queen consort, but let's see. That, uh, I'm not sure if that's what it means. We'll see. The process, of course, speeds up if Charles were to die, bringing about the reign of King William V. Unlike he chooses another name, in that instance, a different question arises. What then happens to Queen Consort Camilla? The answer is nuanced, according to royal experts. The complicated reality in which King Charles will have certainly spelled out his wishes for his wife in great detail. The reigning monarch, in this case, King William, ultimately controls how much or how little a role Queen Consort Camilla would have in her later years. I would say nil. What, I mean, she wasn't even in the, you know, like Mary, banging it out while Diana was alive, and then she's now queen. Like, we're not gonna talk about that. Oh, she's the queen consort. No, she's queen hooker. I'm just, you know, she was doing it back in the day. You know, literally doing it with Charles, you know? And now he's the king, Charles III. I, I hope he uh, recovers. I think he's actually, you know, I don't know what, there's something cool about the way King Charles looks. He's got that look, you know, like that I own everything look, you know, and like you're nothing. <laughs> you look at him, he's just like, you're a peasant. He's got that look. <sighs> something special about that, right? We're indentured servants. He rules the, the land and he has a Range Rover. Guys, so let's see what Queen Camilla Consort has to do. I'm pretty sure they would just be like, lady, why don't you just go hang out in the country, you know, at one of the consortiums. What's more, upon King William's ascension to the throne, his wife, Princess Kate, would become queen. So now you got a double queen deal going. And how do you deal with that? Oh, the mum queen. No, I'm sorry. We're getting rid of the consort. Told you, consortium just sent her to it. She's there now, you know. Shoot, we, we do miss King Charles the Third though. He was a good guy. <laughs> I'm king now though. King William the Fifth. Yeah, guys, he's ready with Kate. King King Kate, Queen Kate. You know, it's 2024. She could be King Kate if she wanted to be. That's not to say Camilla would quickly be forgotten. I already forgot. No, despite the made-for-TV scandals that precede, oh my goodness. Listen to this. That's not to say Camilla would be quickly, quickly forgotten. Despite the made-for-TV scandals that preceded her marriage to King Charles, Camilla, arguably Charles' first love, was embraced by many Brits when she was crowned alongside her husband in May of elaborate corporate coronation. Can I ask you, how was she Charles' first love? Was, she, was, was Camilla together with Charles before she, he married Diana? Now I gotta research that, because this guy's trying to pretend like they were like his first love before he met Diana. There we go. Here's the timeline of the dramatic relationship. King Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles met the first time in 1907 at a polo match and started dating. They broke things off when Charles went off to sea. Camilla married Andrew Parker Bowles in 1973 and 1981. Okay, so they did know each other first. Interesting. Interesting. This is her. This is them right there. Look at guys. Hold on, I'm on it. Anyway, so bottom line, yeah, I guess he knew Camilla first. Still, he's banging it out while he's married to his wife, you know? And that ain't right. But she's basically probably going to be just sent off, you know, to her death. Not literally, but, you know, like, just go and die, lady, you know? We'll give you the castle, though. You're there with your stupid schnauzer. You know? And I'm here with my wife, Kate. 
We're taking over, you know? Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Guys, historically, the monarch's widows have been called the Queen Dowager. King George VI's wife, Queen Elizabeth, became the Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, to distinguish her from her daughter. Whatever. The unlikely case of an abdication or eventually the current king's death, the new King William would call all the shots. It would be down to him. In accordance to his father's and stepmother's wishes, of course, they say little, but every aspect of her public and private life would be reviewed. As for where she would live, it would likely be one of the number of royal residences. I told you, a castle in the woods, you know, with a shotgun in case it gets really bad, you know. Which one would depend on the wishes of her husband? But ultimately, the new king would make the decision. There's the new king right there. He's king in it, you know. King of the castle. It's, it's, it's his discretion, definitely. But I'm sure King Charles III would have his own wishes made clear about that. That his son could just literally say, I don't freaking care. I'm the king now. You know? These kings have been known to be ruthless motherkers, you know, in the past. And they'll just do whatever the hell they want. King Henry VIII <laughs> murdered all these women because they weren't giving him a, 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 a boy. And he had the bad seed. It was him, you know? Back then, you couldn't say that. Hey, chop your head off. I'm sorry? What did you say to me? <laughs> it's my problem? No, I'm sorry. You keep bringing me crap women. I'm here. I'm doing it. Literally. <laughs> and you keep another girl? What's going on here? What's wrong with that lady? She looked good, you know? But what the... A little girl comes out? I got 94 daughters just looking for one son. What's that? No, he was... You know, had three eyes. That wasn't a good example, okay? She, there's something, something wrong with her, too. She gives me a son with three eyes? Cyclops. No, he has a Cyclops. He has a Triclops. Sometimes when you're in it, you don't realize how deep it goes. The Triclops. You know, I don't know why you don't see more about the Triclops, you know, in historical documents. You find lots of the Cyclops. Triclops? Yeah. <laughs> I think I have to contact Rich Killian for a triclops. Yeah. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a news story and you realize that there is a new species that you can identify, that you could bring to the surface, you could classify triclops. You can see everything. That center eye, whew, <laughs> that's the good one. Anyway. Oh my goodness, the things that I... <laughs> See, I don't know, like honestly, I don't know if that's funny, but I think that's funny. I just think that anything that leads to something stupid is funny in like, Triclops? What? I don't know. <laughs> it's just me. I gotta ask Raven. Raven, is there any comedy <laughs> in that? in the triclops and that there are no historical documents with triclops like i just think that's funny i think there were a couple funny moments of course this is all just a day's work here I'm not really sure if it's going to get any better if we're going to have more funny news stories everything seems to be so dramatic and serious I'm trying to inject as much comedy into the daily negativity is tough man Hey, you see, I'm scrolling through and all these stories are gaslighting stories. And I'm like doing my best to read them and add some color and see if we can get you to see some perspective without getting in trouble too. It's like this freaking high wire act that I have to continue to. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Three-eyed giants, they, did they see 4D? <laughs> Do, are you the Triclops? Yeah, the Triclops. Look, I got a, I have a tablet an ancient Sumerian tablet. It talks all about the Triclops. Like, I'll, I'll get it out for you. <laughs> yeah. We'll read it with the 1775 Bible. We'll kind of do it in unison. Like, I'll read an old English passage, and then I'll read about the Triclops in, the old, in ancient Sumerian, which I also speak. Some people are like, oh, were you from Sumer? Possibly. Look, we've all been here many times before, you know? India, they talk about it. I'm just telling you, go check it out. <laughs> Reincarnation. I may have actually been around as Gilgamesh. I mean, you know, some people say, they're like, you have the knowledge of Gilgamesh. You know, also the power. 
Oh, goodness. I'll get that tablet out. I'm, I'm getting it for you for the Triclops. Oh, goodness, you guys are awesome. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like on the way out the door, leave a comment and share. I'm live at 9 a.m. and after 9 p.m., so join us. This is the Mark Inspire Show.